Jennifer, welcome to the Organize 365 podcast. Hello. <laughs> I am super excited about our conversation, but first I want to know how did you find Organize 365? So um, I haven't listened to a lot of your Wednesday interviews, but I haven't heard anyone saying that they found you from the ADHD for smart ass women podcast. And that's how I found you. <laughs> so um, I was diagnosed with ADHD in, um, in I think tw June, 2021. And so I went down the rabbit hole of like, um, ADHD stuff. And I found Tracy Apsuka's podcast, uh, and you were on it. And I have always been like an organization kind of person. Um, and so mixing ADHD and organization was just like the sweet spot for me. So I found you through there and kind of went down the rabbit hole with you as well. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is so awesome. Yeah. That is such a great podcast. Are you a big podcast listener in general? Um, I wasn't until my diagnosis, but, um, I kind of hyper-focused on people. So I hyper-focused on Tracy Otsuka's podcast. And then, um, it was Kristen Carter with, I have ADHD and then it was you. And then it's probably going to be you for a long time. And then, um, <laughs> and then, um, just some other ones. There's some therapy ones that I like listening to, um, with therapy, Jeff, if you've heard of him, he's on Instagram. No. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I love to, um, hear different people's perspectives and I like podcasts. Cause it's like, the person is actually really there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's your friend. It's almost like you're speaking back in your mind to them and have these conversations. And so like when I went to do the PhD, like I found PhD podcast. So I yeah. I'm right there with you. Like anybody who's doing what I am doing, like it, uh, a virtual friend. I love it. Yes. <laughs> You're my virtual friend. <laughs> yes. And now, now more virtual in real life, but not yet yes. in real life. Yet. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about the people who live in your home with you. So, um, it's just me, myself and I, um, uh, I, my apartment is basically just a really expensive like bedroom because <laughs> I'm never there. Um, I feel like I'm kind of in the sandwich generation, even though I don't like have kids of my own. Um, but I do take care of, or help take care of my 94 year old grandmother. Um, she, uh, she's like still fully functional. She just like needs help with like a little things like getting to doctor's appointments and all that sort of stuff. So I'm kind of like her executive assistant, like making nice. sure she's doing all of her med stuff. And, um, and I'm kind of in charge of her medical stuff. And my dad is in charge of like the power of attorney and her finances and like that kind of thing. Um, but then I'm like bouncing around from like work to my grandmother's house, to friend's house, to boyfriend's house, to like all the extracurricular activities. And it's a very expensive storage unit. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, and your dad is so lucky to have you helping so much with the caregiving because that is a huge responsibility. Yeah, it, it's definitely frustrating at times. Um, but uh, uh I, I like kind of teaming up with him, but it's also, um, how do I say it? Um, I, I feel like when I'm organizing for her, I'm doing it for me rather than for my dad and for her, because like when stuff is hitting the fan or like a random question that I haven't like thought about in a really long time is like brought up again, like I'm not searching and rethinking and like using all this mental capacity <laughs> to like think through it. So it is for them. And I'm, and I'm really happy that they're also reaping the benefits of it, but, um, it's for me. <laughs> It sounds like you are saving everyone a lot of uh, decision-making capacity and time I by am. not only doing the work, but also reducing the amount of work that needs to be done the next time. Yes. 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 So you mentioned that you're already organizationally inclined or like organizational stuff. Yes. So why did you decide to rabbit trail over to the Organized 365 podcast? Um, so 
When I was diagnosed with ADHD, I'm not sure what kind I got. I, I feel like I'm uh, combined. Like I have a lot of inattentive uh, skill uh, capabilities and I have a lot of hyperactive um, qualities. So I am harboring a lot of thoughts and ideas all the time. And so that becomes really overwhelming <laughs> really mm -hmm. quickly. And so um, the Sunday basket and kind of listening to your way of thinking like six figure time and like types of work really helped calm and organize my brain. Um, I am noticing since uh, I signed up for the podcast that I need to do some more work on this because um, uh, my, my brain is just getting overwhelmed and like, uh, I am in a teacher position right now. So I'm a long-term sub. And so that's a fun position because, um, I'm not the real teacher, but I'm there every day. So they think that I'm their real teacher and, but I don't have any capabilities like a real teacher would, but, um, yeah, I, I have too many thoughts. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. I, I really like the, the Sunday basket and how I'm able to organize it, but I'm still like fine tuning it, even though I've been really working on it since I think last September. Yeah. And it sounds like in addition to the Sunday basket for your own personal life, you kind of need a Sunday basket for your grandmother and everything yes. related to her. And then you also need like a work box for everything related to your long-term sub position, by the way, yeah. I know people yeah. that that has turned into an actual teaching position without the degree. So like the capabilities apparently yeah. just come as you're doing it. Um, and so the Sunday basket that's giving you order in your own personal life, you are trying to hold in your head, these other categories instead of Sunday basketing yes. them yes. formally, formally or informally. So yeah. what else have you tried to reduce the mental load before or to get organized before you did organize 365 in the Sunday basket? Um, nothing about like the mental load, but I was a fan of Conmarie in high school. Um, and, uh, just like when you like look up Pinterest stuff and you can find like little check sheets and all this sort of stuff, like I did that, but nothing like really ever worked. Um, I don't think I realized like how much of the mental load I was taking on until like my final years of college. And then like having a weird, like mid midlife crisis and then graduating and like kind of launching into becoming an adult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Adulting is no joke, right? <laughs> it is no joke, <laughs> especially when I have my grandmother and like multiple people involved. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned that you started the Sunday basket. What time of year was it? How did you get started? How hard was it to create that habit? What have you noticed that worked? Um. So I bought it as a reward for myself um, in January 2021, I believe. Okay. And then um, I tried starting it. So my my grandmother fell and broke her hip in January of 2021. So I kind of became her full-time caregiver. And by the way, she is totally 100% recovered from that. It's miraculous. Hey. It's crazy. She had like a full hip replacement and everything. And she's like... Yeah, she's going strong. Anyways, um, oh. she, uh, I was with her like 24 seven. And so I bought one as a reward um, for myself for a no spend January. And then I, I couldn't come up with what to put in the basket because <laughs> my, my ideas were like so ingrained in my head and like um, you and some other people in my life have really taught me how to like slow down and be creative again and, um, like play and stuff. And so, um, that, uh, that was really helpful. And, um, one thing I noticed is that I, since I'm like the, the line in between Gen Z and millennial, 
I, I share qualities of both, but I don't have a lot of paper. And so it was like, where do I put all this stuff if I don't have any paper to put in the Sunday basket? And I found that I was saving and harboring my ideas in screenshots on my phone. Oh. So like things that I wanted to buy, um, ideas that I wanted to do, like it was all like on um, Pinterest or my screenshots. Like I would take pictures of stuff at the store that I wanted to like buy in the future or like that kind of stuff. So realizing that that's where my ideas were and being able to move them from my phone to the Sunday basket was really helpful and really cleared the mental load when done correctly. So how do you do that on a regular basis? No one has talked about this before. I know. I was like, ah, oh. yeah. <laughs> um, so I want to find an easier way to do this. Um, but I have done the note card thing where I would write down like what it is and then I would put it in its respective slash pocket. Um, but I want to be able to basically print off ideas yes. but like not in in eight and a half by 11 sheets because that would be overwhelming for me because it would become way too too big too quickly um and so uh I'm still trying to think about that <laughs> maybe printing on uh index cards can you print to index cards so I'm pretty sure that you can take like an 11 and or eight and a half by 11 sheet and then um, like tape them to the paper. And then in Microsoft Word, you can like uh, mm. make little boxes and type and stuff. I'm sure that someone's going to so figure it out. I, yes, we are really looking forward to the person who's going to reply to this podcast and tell us yeah. who figured this out. So thank you, Jennifer, for saying it. I do this all the time. I screenshot things all the time. You know what I screenshot the most? What? It's conversations with you guys. <laughs> So when you guys send me a DM or you say something really nice, like I screenshot it and then I don't share it in a story or anything. It's just on my phone. So I have like yeah. hundreds of these nice things yeah. you guys have said that I haven't even shared, which is hilarious. And so then what do you do with them? And then same thing, like I'll screenshot all kinds of stuff. So if I know that it's like kind of important and I want to do it in a, in a quick fashion. So like today, 5.30 AM, woke up, had this great idea about how to um, share what the education workbox is and education camp. I ordered eight um, chalkboards on Amazon at 6 a.m. from bed <laughs> with markers for Cassie to make these adorable chalkboards that you guys are now seeing on Instagram and in the app to explain like what is the teacher workbox? What is the invisible work of teachers that they don't even know? <laughs> yeah. And then I emailed myself the picture of what I had ordered in Amazon. And then I printed it out and I gave it to Cassie like, hey, this is coming for you. All these chalkboards and all these God. things. I want you to do this and make a picture so that I can. So that one I did print out. And you're right. It takes the whole entire sheet of paper when you print it. Yeah. So I do print photos that way. And I don't know why when you attach them in emails, they become so ridiculously large and to resize them. <laughs> Yeah. And so if I don't do that, then I just don't end up printing them. I know you can print straight from your phone, but again, it's big. So this yeah. is a problem I have as well. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> yeah. So here's one of my solutions. <laughs> I got a Mac laptop, which I don't even use, but I have it for travel for my PhD because like I'm in statistics. So I'm using mm -hmm. SPSS. You can't download that to a Chromebook. And this is just like total rabbit trail here. But I need a computer that can have that so that when I go to Florida next week, I have the stuff I need for the stats class because the, yeah. the class and the project is due before I even get back to Ohio. So I took my whole iPhone and I downloaded all the photos onto the um, computer so that I could clear out my phone, but then I didn't even clear out my phone. <laughs> And I bought a phone so that has like a terabyte that like, so has so much, uh, has so much memory. So whatever. I'm just like, what are we doing over here with our phones? <laughs> Don't even it's know. Like, it's so cathartic to like delete 200 photos at once. Yes. But it's also really aggravating when you accidentally click out of it. <laughs> yes. Lose all of what you're about to delete. No, oh, you just start over again. So it's almost like we have our own Pinterests. Yeah. <laughs> And if you do Insta stories like I do, and I have it set to save the Insta story to my phone. Yeah. Okay. If you guys watched my Instagram or the app, you know how many that is. 
Yeah. So I'm like, well, I don't know what I was talking about on that one. I don't know what I was talking about. (laughs) (laughs) So you could delete them all, but what if they're gold? Yeah, (laughs) I know. I don't know. I don't know. No one's ever going to go back and see them. Yeah. So digital does not save us. It really doesn't. It makes it more complicated. It makes it more complicated and more stressful, in my opinion. (laughs) Because we know we have it somewhere. Yeah. I well since like um adopting your lifestyle or whatever, um I have become a paper person. So I'm starting to like print out emails, like print out confirmations. Like I'm going on a trip in July and I like printed out our plane tickets and like all that sort of stuff. But um, I'm trying to find that happy medium because yes. the amounts of stuff really overwhelms me. And so like, if I see a lot of paper, I feel like, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff I have to do like that I can't forget about. But then if it's not right in front of me or it's in a large capacity on my phone or my computer, that's also overwhelming. So I'm trying to fine tune like how to really get the most out of my Sunday basket so I can really get on to what I'm uniquely created to do. <laughs> Same. And I think it's because like I I like to be a little bit overwhelmed. I'd rather be a little bit overwhelmed than have nothing to do. Like That's true. Greg's like, oh my gosh, you don't have a project today. Like, this is no good. He always says I need to relax. But also if I don't have a project, he's like, well, can you find one? Like, do you have a friend you can go see? Like, because he knows if I don't have a project, he is the project. And he wants me around, but he does not want to be the project, if you know what I mean. Yes, he's like, I know what that's like. I need to be busy. A a non-busy Lisa is not a good Lisa. You You do not want that person. So I don't want to not be overwhelmed. See how do we stay in that happy medium? And I, I yeah. find myself bouncing to like way overwhelmed to underwhelmed, overwhelmed, underwhelmed, overwhelmed, yeah. underwhelmed. And I think we just have to accept that is going to be the continuum we're on. And I use the Sunday basket for when I get really overwhelmed. I'm like, great, this is a three hour su- Sunday. And I'm like, okay, now we go through them all. Or like, I do it a lot in my work box. Like, okay, I'm going to go through everything in all the slash pockets. And then I'll just get rid of trash bags full of paper because I've already processed that. I've already done that. I've rewritten it. I've moved it onto agenda. And it feels so good because you can literally see everything that you've done. And then I'm like, good, I have room for more. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You were talking about, or you have been talking about recently about how you have like coordinated your life minute by minute. (laughs) And I feel like a couple of weeks ago I got in that sweet spot, but then it became like overwhelming really fast. Like I like forgot to do like really deep dive into my Sunday basket because you really have to like methodically think about that every single time you plan. And so if you kind of like half plan, it gets, it gets, the balance gets off really quickly. (laughs) Yeah. And I think, um, I have been thinking about that a lot lately because I am not too planned, but I am to the point where I am doing so many things simultaneously, seemingly successfully, that I'm still kind of wondering how I'm doing it. And (laughs) I, (laughs) have you ever got a point where you're like, I'm riding a bike, I'm riding a bike. And then you crash it because you're like, surprised that you're riding it or like, you know how to do something. And you cognitively know that like, should I be able to do this? (laughs) And this. So I'm like, should I really be able to run a company and have good family relationships and yeah. be able to do a PhD something? Like, it seems like it shouldn't be allowed to do this. So we have a season where there's some non-emergency, but elective medical procedures for multiple family members going to go bing, bang, boom. And I'm like, hmm, let's see how, what happens when we throw that, that rock in the mix, you know, and a couple of rocks at the same time with some travel. And what I find is that um, it's not perfect. I'm not trying... I am so sorry. I do not know why this phone keeps going off for you guys who are listening. Um, It's not like I'm trying to be perfect, but my capacity for the amount that I can juggle is so much bigger than I ever imagined. Yes. With the caveat that I'm not in the active parenting years. And I say that because in the active parenting years, or like in your case, Jennifer, you know, full time caregiving for your grandmother, there is so much out of your control that it is super hard and frustrating to plan, but I am not in the active parenting years. 
And so while I'm a very involved grandmother, I am not the mother. And I, we are not caregiving for one of our parents currently. So mm -hmm. I am in a sweet spot where I can really, I'm on a flat open road and I am running full out. And when I have to slow down on the back roads and they get twisty again, and we're back into caregiving years, I will not be able to do this many things this fast. I want yeah. to be perfectly clear about that. Um, so one thing that I did do when I was in the active parenting years that I have mentioned on the podcast, but it's been a while that helped me from biting the heads off of the people I was caregiving for was this, <laughs> I made my plan, but I made my plan flexibly. So I made blocks of things that I wanted to get done in this week, but the order in which and the day in which they happened was flexible. So instead of planning five days worth of work in five days, I would plan maybe three days worth. And I would say, well, in a perfect world, it's going to happen Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but I would leave Thursday, Friday open. That way, if Monday afternoon, kids started throwing up and coming home sick, then Tuesday moved to Thursday and Wednesday moved to Friday. And so everything was flexible. And when I started my in-home professional organization business, the only thing that was inflexible on our calendars for my partner and I were the jobs we were organizing and our kids' medical appointments. Everything else, mm -hmm. when we woke up in the morning, even when we were driving to the professional organization job, until they let us in the front door and we were organizing, we weren't sure we were working that day because so many professional organization jobs cancel. Or like if you're a substitute teacher, or like, mm -hmm. like I, Greg and I went away over the weekend at, on my PhD break and we went over the river into Kentucky. I said, oh, we're going to have this trip. And he's like, we've been in the car for 30 minutes. I'm like, I know. But until you cross the Ohio River and you're in a different state, you're not really sure you got out. I said, because yeah. until the airplane has left Cincinnati, I'm not actually sure I'm going on the trip because I can get all the way to the airport and be recalled back home and the trip is off. You know what I mean? But yeah. once you're on the airplane or you've crossed the Ohio River and like you're going down 75, like, sorry, I'm gone. I'll see you when I get back. But also we took that trip by car on purpose. So if we got the phone call, we could literally be home in 90 minutes. Yeah. Like Greg and I are not traveling on an airplane away from Abby and the baby yet, but we will eventually. And so it's kind of like baby stepping it out, always knowing in the back of your mind, this plan might get ripped out. And then we move into this other plan and it doesn't mean you're going to be okay with it. I was plenty ticked off, <laughs> but it doesn't help the situation to externalize that unhappiness because then the whole family literally falls apart. I'm like, when do I get to be the one that falls apart? And they're like, never. I'm like, yeah. well, like you know what I mean? Like we're never allowed to have the temper tantrum ourselves because then everybody's temper tantrums gets 10 times bigger. I'm like, geez, I have to do all the planning and then I have to do all of the orchestrating. And I'm also not allowed to lose my mind. This is a lot on me, you know? <laughs> so yeah. I'm just saying there, if you are in the active caregiving years, it's frustrating. Like, let's just call a spade a spade. It is exhausting. It is frustrating. It is isolating. It is hard. It is so hard. Yeah. <laughs> so you should give yourself, I mean, there, there, you have to do it. Who else is going to take care of your grandmother? Nobody. That's true. You have to do it. No one's going to do it. You have to do it. I'm telling you it's hard. It's not going to be forever. Hopefully she lives a lot longer. She's not going to live 50 years, but you know what I'm saying? She's going to live a long yeah. time. If she can do a hip replacement at 92, like she's going to make it a while. Yeah. Um, but it's hard and it is a season. It is a season. Yeah. So what else? What else have you had success with? Like, so you're doing the Sunday basket. Um, when you do get these pockets of time to do things that are under your own control, are you able to be more productive when you have actual time to yourself? Do you find your, like, that's what I found. I found that if I would get any time, man, I could pack that full and get a whole bunch of stuff done. Whereas before I had this mindset and I was in the active parenting years, I would get time to myself and I'd spend the 20 minutes so excited. I had time with so many yeah. ideas where I could spend that time that the time would be gone. And then I wouldn't have done anything. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, I, in, in the recent past, so within the past couple of months, um, I, uh, 
so I live on, I live 25 to 30 minutes for my grandmother and also my boyfriend. So like I spend a lot of time with my grandma because they live really close and my job is within like 10 or 15 minutes from my grandma's house. Like they're almost zoned in the same school district or the school system. And so, um, it is really exciting when I have specifically planned out like what I need to take with me for the specific trip. So like um, preparing for um, either talking to you, like I'd need my laptop and I'd also need um, some specific other things to like make sure that I'm prepared for that. But this trip technically is not uh is not the same of what I'll need for next time regarding on what I'm doing. And so I've had some success recently on like preparing for trips and not forgetting anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, it just, it really need Like, I really need a deep dive and some like deep thought, like some, uh, onion ring drives about this. <laughs> I love thinking on driving. Are you the same way? Yeah. Yeah. It's so hard when I don't have driving time. You know, Sarah Blakely used to make herself a fake commute to work because it was only five minutes to get to her office, but it would take her an hour to get there because she would like just drive all over Atlanta to get to the office so she could process her thoughts. I I love that for her. (laughs) I do too. I'm like, that's basically what onion rings are. Like it only takes me 10 minutes to get home, but when I get onion rings, it takes an hour. (laughs) <laughs> my husband's like, does not take an hour. I'm like, it does. Watch me on the live 360. He's like, well, yes. you didn't have Culver's. I'm like, they're all yeah. far away, Greg. So I just I also go. love Culver's. <laughs> I love they're it. So not they're good here for in us. Texas. <laughs> mm, they're so good. They're yeah. so good. Is there any other story that you wanted to share about um, organizing now or in the past or? Yeah. Um, so along with the whole theme of like ADHD, um, I feel like the education system (laughs) kind of was like, this is what you need to do. This is how you do it. And even though like I did have teachers that were like teaching me, um, like, uh, like visual ways and kinesthetic ways and like all that sort of stuff. But I do feel like I was taught to not know how to like dream and play Mm. anymore. And that was like, kind of like banged out of my head, like K through 12 system. And so when I started to become a senior and a junior in high school, I was like, okay, well, what am I, what am I going to do with my life? (laughs) And my parents made it very clear to me that I was going to college. I did want to go to college, but like they made it very clear that I was going, whether I liked it or not. (laughs) And so I picked music. I I have a degree in music education. And um, I think I picked it because I am talented. Like I did really well in my like recital stuff and I got really into opera and like all that sort of stuff. But if I had given myself like time to really dream and like if the Embrace Conference had been like here, like in 2015, 2014, oh my gosh, like I can't even tell you where my life would be right now. But um. It, uh, what was I going to say? Um, I also like in high school had these like people pleasing tendencies and like, I, like people were like, oh, you should do music because you're really good at it. And I was like, okay. And so I basically got this degree out of spite because (laughs) I didn't want to be told that, oh, I knew you couldn't do it or like that kind of stuff. And so now with like, the Sunday basket and especially the podcast. I love the Friday podcast that it's really changed my mindset on like, I do have control over my life. Like I can build the life that I want, like, and it can be better than I ever even dreamed. Like I thought that going into, going into college, like my life was going to be choir teacher for 30, 40 years with hopefully a husband and a couple kids. And then that was it. But like my calling I've, it's just so much bigger than that. And like, that's thanks to you and my therapist and all me doing like the dirty work. 
Um, yeah. it's, it's just so invigorating. It, it's great. Wow. I mean, it's so fun to hear you say that because it took me so long to realize that. I know. <laughs> I love that for you. Yes. It, it, yeah. I, I have like a lot of, uh, or like Tracy Atsuka again, um, she does this thing every January where she picks a word for the year. And I forget what mine was last year, but this, this year, the word is intentionality. And so you have really helped me do that. And like, I, uh, in my ADHD rampage, <laughs> I, um, I listen to the six figure podcast, six, six figure time podcasts and the types of household work for like on repeat, like every day for like four or five weeks. I like practically <laughs> have those episodes like memorized. <laughs> oh my God. Like, uh, like the part where you're talking about how the battery goes off at three in the morning and you're like, ah, oh, three fifteen. Was that really the battery? Yes. <laughs> and like everything. But it really changed my mindset of like, I, wow. I have so much power that I never thought that I did. Like no one ever taught me that. And like, now I have capacity to like dream and like, and just do whatever I want. And that, and finding my unique purpose has been a long time coming. And I know that you've done some like episodes on like, well, I can't tell you, I can't do it for you, which I, I, I hate that, but I really thank you for that. <laughs> um, it's well, just... don't you think you can have multiple this, this is what I'm realizing. Like it's a unique purpose for this season and then another one and then another one. And yes. often they like, like, I think I've had a lot of different unique purposes, even just since I've started organized 365, I could have never imagined when I started where I am today or where I am today, you know, five, 10 years from now. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, it's been a really pleasurable experience. <laughs> that is so awesome. So is that what you would say you have more of now? It's just dreaming? Uh, dreaming responsibility, and that's positive and negative, um, depending on the day and how I feel. Um, and, uh, what do you mean by responsibility? Responsibility to fulfill that dream or what are uh, like you say responsibility, you have more responsibility? I've been like taking care, like doing care, care tasks and taking care of others. <laughs> because you have the capacity to do it. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. I have, I think I would have had the capacity to do it, but I have the capacity to, to do it well. Yes. That's a big difference. <laughs> it is a big difference. Yeah. And how would you say that if you have more time, you're using that time now? Um, so now that I have more time to plan, I am able to, um, really deep dive into relationships with people. Ooh. So, um, I have now started dating somebody and he's pretty cool and I'd like to keep on to him for a long time. <laughs> and so now that I have a Sunday basket and I'm able to pre plan and basically, uh, basically do Monday basket with my grandma, she's not involved, but I go over to her house on Mondays and like, make sure she's doing her meds right. And like making like all the little stuff that she needs me to do, I'll do on Mondays. And so since I'm not going over like every other day to do these reactive tasks, I now have more time to spend with significant others. And also like if I wanted to go do something with coworkers, I can, or spend time with my best friends and like all that sort of stuff. That is so awesome. Yeah. It's not like you have time and you do nothing with it. Like you're just using the time that you've always had differently. Yes. Mm hmm how does it feel to be, um, so purposefully planning things? It's so fulfilling. 
<laughs> because we hear with a lot of times, if you're diagnosed with ADHD, the resistance to planning because it's too stifling and it's, and you can't be spontaneous. Well, I, I think that ADHD is very spontaneous. <laughs> yes. But I do have a comorbid, um, anxiety, uh, mm diagnosis. And so I think that that's where the sweet spot is. It doesn't feel like a sweet spot, but that's like, I like the order of planning. Like, like the, the anxiety is kind of, um, borderline OCD tendencies. And so like, um, planning really calms everything down. And so there's always new ideas, which is thanks to the ADHD, but it's also like executing, which is thanks to the anxiety. <laughs> I love yeah. it. I need these comorbid diagnoses. Yeah. <laughs> this ship I would not, <laughs> not, I would not suggest <laughs> zero out of 10 would not recommend. <laughs> what do you wish you had known sooner? Um, I mean, kind of like what we've touched on, like just mm -hmm. like knowing how to dream and like live life and be okay with things not being okay or like going exactly yeah. how you want and like um uh like I wish I'd known that I I could create this life rather than life happening to me um that's something I wish I'd known sooner I also wish that I had been to an embrace conference <laughs> way earlier on in my life um, I'm still working on, uh, getting that, but, um, yeah, that's something that I wish that I had known earlier, mm -hmm. but I, that's kind of a hard question because even though I wish that I had known it, that doesn't mean that I'm like, res like resentful or regretful that it happened because without those things, I definitely wouldn't be where I am right now, which is more grateful, more intentional, happier, more purposeful, fulfilled, like all that sort of stuff. And, um, so the ride is interesting. <laughs> the ride of life. It is. it is very, very interesting. What advice would you give to someone who's just starting out? Um, so I am a huge proponent for therapy. Like I, in, in the pandemic, like I, was like rock bottom, like depression and like all that sort of stuff. And with the encouragement of my friends, I gained a therapist and I'm really lucky that my first therapist that I talked to was like my bestie instead of having to like go through different doctors mm -hmm. to try and figure out who, what a good, what is a good fit? Cause I don't think I would have, um, continued on with it, but learning how to, um, learning to heal from those like little T traumas. And then also like the bigger ones. Like I know that there's a lot of people out there who have a lot of things that they need to sort through. And so the less that you have clouding your mind, like even subconsciously, like, like there's that book called the body keeps the score and like, it's held in your body. Like if you can learn how to heal that, like with your inner child and like all that sort of stuff, you're going to have more capacity and more mm -hmm. happiness. <laughs> and so yeah. if I were to suggest anything, <laughs> I think everybody needs a therapist, but I would suggest to get a therapist and then also really deep dive into like, why, why are you, uh, what is your unique purpose? Why are you here? What, like, yeah all those like existential questions that we all like fight about like throughout our lives. Um, because once you start finding like answers, even though like you were saying, like they might change from season to season, like mm -hmm. you're going to, um, it's just going to bring so much more fulfillment and you can do what you want to do rather than life happening to you. <laughs> Yeah. It, it's almost like, and it took me a long time to really focus on me, I guess, mm -hmm. even saying it, I'm like, how self-conceited is that? Yeah. <laughs> like, you're not allowed to say that, um, that we should always be so other focused because if we focus on ourselves, that's selfish. But yeah. I think that ultimately you are the only person you can control yeah. and 
it's probably a screenshot I took on my phone today. Somebody shared something and I screenshotted it. And it was basically like every single person has a different version, sees a different version of you. Yeah. I have to look through my phone to see who it was. Cause I, I remember I screenshot it and like back to our original conversation. I was like, yeah. That is so true. Like every single person has a different version of you in their head. Yeah. If you think about that, and I can't tell you who I attribute it to because I saw it on Instagram, but it's, um, that's true. Like even you have a different vision of yourself from day to day and year to year and month to month. And so like, I think that the more that you think about your own thinking and do things that work for you, as long as it's not to the detriment of someone else, yeah. um, I mean, there's plenty of work to be done on ourselves, like our entire life. We don't have to worry about working on anybody else. We can just keep working on ourselves and what we have in our control. And there's a lot more in your control than you realize. Um, And I, it's so much more proactive and productive. And then you only have you to blame for you. (laughs) (laughs) I think it was in um, Shawshank. They say, you gotta get busy living or get busy dying. You know, like like, you just got to, you do you and just focus on you. Don't worry so much about what other people are thinking or doing or have or want to be, or like, just think about you and what's your next step. Yeah. And then it's just fun. Cause you're like, oh my gosh, can I, can I do this also? Yes. No one's going to tell me no. <laughs> no yeah. one's going to give you permission, but also nobody's going to tell you no. It's amazing. What, it's true. It's amazing what you don't need permission to do. And we're waiting for permission for. Like, yeah, who do you think is going to give us this magical permission. We're adults. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just do it. Just try it. What's the, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, that's true. Mm hmm. But yeah, that's what I'd, I recommend. Like, I'm sure that there's some people listening that are going to be like, well, I don't have any, th- like my parents did nothing wrong and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not really hurting that much, but you'd be surprised. <laughs> like when what, you, you actually find go the in and do the work, like yeah. <laughs> you might be crying for a little bit. <laughs> well, and it's not like parents do things wrong on purpose. Yes. Yes. Um, but sometimes we can interpret what they do or what other kids at school have done to us or yes. like, yes that they didn't even intend to do, but we internalize it a certain way and it changes the way we look at ourselves or the way we look at people. And we just don't even really realize it. I forget if it was, I don't think it was you, but I was listening to, um, to somebody recently and they were saying that children are very, very, very good and receptive at understand, like seeing things that are, what are happening, but they're Mm. very, very bad at interpreting what's happening. Mm. So like people or like children will like see something as it's happening, but then make up the story (laughs) that's completely incorrect in their head. And so that probably attributes to a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is amazing in this psychology degree that I am working on how much happens internally that we internalize and hold on to, like you said, that then impacts us decades and decades and decades later. And I mean, it's just part of being a human. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jennifer, this was such an awesome conversation. Thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast. Thank you so much. It's been so much fun.